This is session four, Import Media. Editing starts with importing media. Until you have clips to edit, there's not a whole lot you can do. So we'll start by exploring the media import window. Then we'll learn how to import a QuickTime movie. Then learn how to import tapeless media. And along the way, I'll give you my preferences for import settings. There are two views of clips in the media import window. List, which only allows importing the entire clip, and Thumbnail, which allows you to import a clip or arrange within a clip. Skimming also works in the import window and makes the process of reviewing clips both fast and easy. So let me show you how to open the media import window, navigate to where media is stored and create a shortcut, how to open a folder of clips for review, how to select a clip or a group of clips to import, how to select a range within a clip, how to select appropriate import preferences, and how to import the selected clips. I've created a couple more libraries. We've got our model trains back and I've added two events inside it. I've created a, a library called People. So I'm going to select that to start and click the Import Media button. You could also click this downward pointing arrow. You could also go up to File and select Import or what I tend to do most of the time is I just type the keyboard shortcut Command I. This opens up the media import window. On the left hand side are all the devices that are attached to my computer and notice that I've selected the second drive RAID. I have long ago learned never store media on the boot drive. Even if it's an SSD drive, the boot drive is for applications and the operating system, media gets stored to a second drive, either internal on the old Mac Pro or external on just about everything else. I always store media to a second drive. I can select the drive that my media is on. In this case, I'm going to highlight second drive RAID. And these are all the different folders that are on that RAID. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff on here. When I'm doing training, I store all of my training media inside the media samples folder. In fact, we're going to be using this a lot as we start to create projects inside Final Cut. I want to use this as a favorite. So I'm going to grab the icon for media samples and drag it on top of the word favorites. And it creates a shortcut. Now. Whenever I want to get to the Media Samples folder, for instance here I go to the boot drive, just click on Media Samples. It automatically takes me to the second drive, automatically takes me inside Media Samples. So if you're always going back to the same folder time and time again, create a favorite. Let's go down here and take a look at some QuickTime movies. I've got something from Pond5. So we'll open the Pond5 Clips folder. And there's a group called People. We've got girls on carousel. How can you not be cheerful looking at young kids having a good time on a merry-go-round? The skimmer is on by default. So as I slide my mouse across here, I'm not holding the mouse button down. I'm just simply sliding it across and I'm able to see what that clip looks like. To import the clip, all I would need to do is to click Import Selected. And we'll do more of that in just a second. But there's a couple of other buttons I want to illustrate. This one down here is new. It allows us to show waveforms as part of our clips. This happens to be silent, which is why I don't see any waveforms. So I'll turn them back off. Another button which is not new, but you may not have noticed, is this close window after starting import. Let's say that you want to import some files to one event, other files to another event. You don't want this import window to disappear. You want the window to stay put. You just want the importing to go on in the background while you're busy selecting other clips. If you want the window to close when you click Import Selected, check this checkbox. If you don't want it to close, don't check the checkbox. Let's go to something which is not a QuickTime movie. Uh, let's see, there's some train footage, yes. Here I can see a list of the clips that I want to bring in, but it's better if I double click the folder and open it up. Now when it's open, I have two different views. I have list view and I have thumbnail view. These show up whenever we're not importing a QuickTime movie. This happens to be AVC HD footage. Skimmer still works, I can pull the mouse across here and take a look at my trains as they're moving around. I mean, face it, isn't now a perfect time to get into training? Whew, thank you, I'll be here all week. Now, let's say that I want to import this clip. Let's find a clip that I want to import. Let's take a look at this one where the trains are getting really close here. Just select the clip. Notice the yellow box. The yellow box indicates a selection. 
we're going to see this yellow box a lot in a view or the timeline in the import window. And this allows me to bring in the entire clip. Or if I click, hold, and drag, I can select a range that indicates where I want the clip to start just before that engine comes in and where I want it to stop just as the train goes into the tunnel. Or I can put my skimmer where I want the shot to start and type the letter I. That sets an in or a start and type the letter O, that sets an out or an end. To be able to select a single clip, just click on it. To select multiple clips, hold the Command key down. I'm Command selecting multiple clips. To select a region, click on it. To select multiple regions, Command click on it. I'm going to just bring in two regions and a clip. Once you have your selection made, click Import Selected. This opens up the Import dialog. And there's been some changes here. First, you have to specify where do you want the media imported. Notice that it has selected the Happy People event inside the People Library. Well, there's no Happy People here. <laughs> it's actually under Model Trains. And I get to ask myself, is this showing how Model Trains are constructed, actually the scenery, or the finished work? This happens to be finished work. So I'm going to put it inside the finished works. Because I have to transcode, which means convert, from the format the camera shot into something Final Cut wants to edit, I must copy the files into the Model Trains library. If I'm bringing in a QuickTime movie, I have two choices. I can either copy the file, called Managed Media, or leave it in place, which is Referenced Media or External Media. Generally, you're safest always copying files into the Model Trains library. It does take more storage space, but it means all the media that you want to work with is inside one library, which makes media management and moving projects a whole lot easier. Transcoding means to convert. We want to create optimized media which converts the file from whatever format it was shot, AVC HD, which is wonderful for shooting but not so good for editing, into ProRes 4.2.2. We can also create proxy media. We'll be talking about that more when we talk about importing. My general recommendation is not to check any of the video checkboxes because they take forever in three days, but do check all the audio checkboxes because they can solve problems in the audio analysis is very fast. So generally, copy files into the Model Trains library, check Create Optimized Media, don't check any of the video checks, do check all the audio checks, and we'll explain this in more detail in the chapter on media importing. When you're done, click Import. Now, in the background, it starts to import. The clips are already available to me. And if I turn on skimming, there's my first clip, there's my second clip, there's my third clip. The clips are still importing in the background, but Final Cut is smart enough to allow me to start editing even before the transcoding is complete. This is just really cool. And we can see the status of the transcoding by this little percentage indicator right down here. Click on it, it opens up the background tasks window, which shows you all the work going on in the background. Or just get a quick summary view by looking at the clock. In just a few seconds, all that transcoding, all that importing is complete. All editing starts with importing media. Final Cut Pro 10 supports a wide variety of media and camera formats. Visit Apple's website for the complete list at apple.com slash Final Cut Pro slash. Chapter 4 covers media management and importing in much more detail. This has been an excerpt of our most recent Final Cut Pro 10 training covering workflow and editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store. And thanks 